boom. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. It's time for a weekly track roundup. Whether you're ready for it or not, I'm going to go over what I felt were some of the best and worst tracks of the week. They're all linked down below with, of course, links to our sponsor, the good people over at The Ridge. Uh, they still make these awesome nifty metal plated minimalist wallets that fit nicely in your front pocket. Look at the sheen on that bad boy. Uh, you can hit up the link down below. Promo code MELON. 10% off that order. Also down there, we have links to our turntable lab uh, dealy where we get kicked back on that, get some turntables, buy 10 turntables. We'll get kicked back on all of them. <laughs> also our Patreon page where you can uh, get some extra bonus content uh, that we drop every month. Let's Argues, uh, classic album live streams. We post some of our New Music Friday streams over there in full as well. Access to our Discord. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. All right. And our newsletter. Sign up for that newsletter. We got that newsletter going. We put all the content we drop from week to week in that newsletter so you don't miss a thing. And here we go. Worst tracks of... The week, we have a handful. We've got a couple. Bam, one. Ugh, this new one with uh, Megan the Stallion from Maroon 5 is a really terrible pop cut that, uh, frankly, Megan the Stallion cannot save. She cannot save it. It is so bland and boring. And uh, uh, if Adam Levine truly believes that there are no more bands anymore, uh, songs like this, that's probably the reason why. All right, uh, we also have one from Justin Bieber. Hold on. It, it is better than Yummy. It is better than a lot of the stuff on his last record. It does have a jump and dance beat, but outside of that, it's a pretty bland cut. And why listen to this when you could listen to the weekends after hours? Honestly, there's there's really no reason. And we also have this new one from uh, DJ Snake with Selena Gomez on it. And it pretty much sounds like a uh, reggaeton uh, for people who have never heard that before in their lives. And uh uh, I don't know. It's like the kind of reggaeton that you could play at like a white wedding. You know, it's, uh, that's that's my read on it anyway. All right. Uh, meh. Let's move into the tracks that I thought were just OK, but still worth a shout out. You might like them more than me. But bam, uh, Tyler, the creator, has seen fit to drop the music accompanying his uh, Coca-Cola commercial. It's uh, all over the place. It's messy, but it's, uh, I don't know, kind of a cross between a really lo-fi nutty cherry bomb song but also uh some of the more off his rocker spots of igor it's a fun listen it's a fun listen all right we also have this new one uh with wow like ambitious crossover here the 1975 uh, ambitious crossover 1975 charlie xcx and no rome spinning it's a house jam with driving dance beats, but uh, really kind of overdid it on the auto tune, in my opinion. Just all the vocal layers are a bit of an ear sore. Uh, we also have a new one from Lil Baby where he gives a pretty passionate vocal performance. It's uh, just a shame it's over a $5 beat. Not really crazy about this one. Uh, we've also got one from uh, Juice World with Clever and Post Malone. It's kind of a, the new version of Life's a Mess. I mean, I do enjoy the older version. Uh, this new one just kind of has a more acoustic string backed instrumental clever and post Malone do their thing. Um, if you like the track, it's worth listening to. If you love juice, it's worth listening to uh, again. Do I prefer it to the first version, the older version? No, but it's uh, certainly a cool way to express a, you know, love for juice this time. And uh, just a admiration for that track. Cool way to kind of see the song in a new light. I suppose we've also got Japanese breakfast. Japanese breakfast season is here. With this uh, new cut B Suite, it's got a hop and dance beats, bit of a disco flair. Almost feels like a new take on a vintage uh, like city pop style. Uh, very bright, very poppy, very dancey. Uh, liking it quite a bit. Um, you know, is it the most unique song I've heard in my life, or is it like the best vocal performance? No, not necessarily. But I still am looking forward to this record, and maybe the song will grow on me in the context of the LP. We'll see. Uh, album is coming out in June, I believe. Oh, we've got a new one from Baby Keem. Um, man, I was really hoping that uh, Baby Keem would come hard with this new track. No sense. Um, and that tw he'd sort of make 2021 his, the, the, this, his year, considering like how quiet things were for him 
uh, the year he sort of like, you know, uh, became a double XL freshman. But this track uh, vocally, instrumentally is just really underwhelming. I mean, I do like some of the vocal melodies on it, but there's not a lot of contrast across the track. Uh, the bars are a little bland as well. I, I see him moving in this direction with this track anyway. That's a little forlorn, almost a little emo trap influenced as well. I mean, uh, you know, this this sound right now is certainly popular, but is he uh, doing anything with it that is really striking to me? Uh, not necessarily, you know. All right, uh, we've got one from Phineas with a uh, ash on it as well. Uh, Till Forever Falls Apart. It's a little overproduced, but I think the poetry of the track is pretty moving, and I like the way their uh, vocals intertwine as well. Uh, it's a very lovely little ballad. Give it a try. I think, uh, you know, Phineas's stuff is uh, getting a little more interesting over time. Certainly looking forward to seeing uh, how he artistically kind of comes into his own uh, over time. We've got this new one from 88 Rising which is one of the most insane tracks I've heard this week. I hate the first half of it, but the second half of it is great. <laughs> it features Warren Hugh and also Atarashi Gako. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really a mess. It is all over the frickin' place. Uh, you know, some elements of it are a little hip-hop influenced. Some elements of it are like, you know, dance influenced. It is nuttily mixed and produced too. Um, a lot of zany vocals on it as well. I really don't. I, I really have no idea how to make heads or tails of this, but uh, uh, all I know is I'm, I'm very split on it, quite literally. All right, uh, best tracks, best tracks of the week, the ones that really uh, stood out to me, they are as follows. Bam, new one from Baby Gravy. Uh, actually, it's just kind of a new version of the song Oops with Lil Wayne on it, but uh, a different instrumental approach as well, like really kind of throwing it back to the days of... Uh, like uh, Two Live Crew and uh, Salt and Peppa on the instrumental front. Just like really wild, really funny, really tongue in cheek, just a crazy, uh, you know, pop rap uh, cut with uh, danceable beats. We've got uh, this one from Yukika. Love Month is the title. Uh, she is a pop singer and artist operating out of Korea, but apparently she hails from Japan. Big disco, pop, and J-pop influences on this cut that go over really well. Uh, quality production, quality tune. I like it a lot. We have a new one from Shushu, the next teaser from this upcoming album of duets. Uh, this one features liars on the cut, and um, it's very bombastic. It's got a lot of spoken word passages. Um, in a very funny way, I kind of liken it to <laughs> the Chainsmokers song Selfie. You know, this song is uh, Chainsmokers Selfie, but if you're, you're into the band Swans, if you like the band Swans and you want your very own Chainsmokers Selfie... <laughs> Make sure you uh, you listen to this track. It's titled Rumpus Room. Uh, we have uh, this one from Uma over here, who is an artist that uh, I have never heard of before. I don't think many people have heard of before. I was checking on uh, uh, this project's um, social media accounts, and it seems like there's barely any followers so far. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very beautiful little low-key tune with some bedroom pop vibes, some Latin pop vibes. Uh, give it a shot. Give it a listen. It's uh, quite lovely. And, uh, you know, if there's more like this coming down the pipe, uh, I would love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. All right. We have uh, Daddy's Home, new record, St. Vincent, coming out soon. It's on the way. Pay Your Way in Pain is the title of this new cut. It's got a really wild, wild mix with... Uh, I would say the mix is claustrophobic. It's really trying to crush you with all the sounds in it, especially the vocals, which are heavily manipulated and layered and just like smothering me throughout the song aggressively. There's a big David Bowie influence, but there's a freaky Prince vibe to it as well. Um, you know, it's, it seems like a lot of the quirky, strange ideas from Mass Seduction and even the self-titled to a degree, but like, pushed even further in my opinion. Um, I don't know. I'm liking that about it. I am liking that about it. Uh, we've also got a new one from Porter Robinson. Musician is the title of this one. It is a bright, cheery, uh, somewhat jittery electro pop banger. I'm uh, liking how this new project is shaping up based off of these uh, teasers and singles for sure, for sure, for sure. We've also got uh, Patrick Page the second of the internet fame. He's got this, uh, cut out this big, funky, sweet, 
uh, sensual and some somewhat tongue-in-cheek cut as well that I'm digging on quite a bit, uh, which is titled Whisper, Want My Love. Uh, album is coming out via Fat Possum, I believe. Uh, so that should be interesting, uh, seeing that crossover. But, uh, but yeah, I'm liking this one quite a bit. A lot of personality to this track, for sure, for sure. All right, we've got uh, Nate Day. This artist from Florida that I'm just hearing about recently is uh, quite good on this song over here titled Soul. It is a grimy southern internet rap banger that is just ah it's i I suppose uh, it's a little glitchy as well um i'm liking it it's dark it's got texture it's got personality to it um give it a listen give it a try it's quite good all right we have a a remix over here from the meridian brothers of latinos alas rotas and it's uh got that freaky experimental uh, spacious and strange forward-thinking progressive cumbia vibe and style that the uh, Meridian Brothers are known for. Give it a shot. Give it a try. We've got uh, Gulch over here, hardcore and metalcore outfit, Gulch. They've got this uh, new split out, and their side of it, their song on this killer freaking split is titled Bolt Swallower. It's heavy. It's got some savage drums, some in-your-face vocals. It's, it's, really a, it's really a brick to the head. Try it out. We've got uh, Elza Soares, or I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Soares, Nos is the title of this new song. Uh, she is a very experienced veteran, legendary Brazilian singer and songwriter who's gotten very, uh, her, her catalog has gotten quite dark and experimental over the years. And that is very much the case for this new song over here as well, which sees her delivering uh, some pained and passionate, moving uh, vocals over some uh, uh, very odd electronics. Um, you know, I was I was into a lot of the stuff that she was doing on her last record, but it wasn't quite, you know, blowing me away. It was definitely something that I uh, held my interest and had me just, you know, curious as to where things would kind of move uh, into the future. And I don't know, I'm just kind of liking the way that uh, her voice uh laces up with the electronics on this one. I think it's a uh, really a dark, I guess, a, I guess adventurous, uh, interesting track. Give it a listen, especially if you're unfamiliar with this artist's work, because uh, uh, if, if you go back and listen to, you know, kind of the classics that put her name on the map and kind of fast forward to today, it's uh, quite the artistic evolution, you know, for anybody who's uh, kind of out of the know. All right, we have uh, Scary Hours, Drake, Champagne Poppy, now, uh, the reason I'm putting this over here in the best section is because Wants and Needs featuring Little Baby is very good. Solid hook. Uh, Little Baby's performance is high energy. Uh, Drake himself, I think, kicks off the song very well on the first verse. Um, the intro is a little shoddy, but from there it is smooth sailing. Uh, the other tracks on the thing, the intro cut on the Scary Hours EP, is uh, almost feels like a Dark Lane demo tapes left over. Uh, the track featuring Rick Ross is kind of one of those classic Drake moments, like a 5 a.m. in Toronto type moment where he's just like, it's it's just a diary of where he is mentally and emotionally right now. Everything that's going on in his life between, you know, the child support and this is sending his son to school and just all the excesses and all the signs of success in his life, so on and so forth. It's not one of the most captivating and um, interesting tracks he's ever done in that vein, uh, especially on the instrumental side. And the farther I get into the song, the more I wonder, like, why was Rick Ross even there? If this is like if it's if this is going to be one of those types of tracks, but you know, having said that, uh, still you know I, I still do think wants and needs with a uh, little baby is quite good and uh, definitely worth uh, anyone's time, even people who are usually like Drake skeptical. Uh, we also have the heart and the tongue. Chance the rapper, I think he's back, guys. I think he's back. This new single over here is quite good. Yeah, it's maybe more of a freestyle, no big chorus or anything like that, no big feature. I don't predict this one's gonna be reaching the top of the charts or anything like that. But it's uh, still a good track with great, great, great writing on Chance's part, like leagues ahead of anything that was on the big day. Uh, Some of the wordplay on the back end is great. The biblical references throughout the track are quite good as well. Uh, Liking this one a lot. We've got a Silk Sonic, Bruno Mars, Anderson Pack. My God, this track over here leave the door open. It's beautiful. It's soulful, funky, just gorgeously produced. 
immaculate sounding and uh, a song and uh, really just a tune that uh, complements both of their styles, personalities, and talents. I'm loving Anderson's very sensual and charismatic verses, the soaring and passionate choruses from Bruno. Uh, I'm most definitely looking forward to this new record, Goddamn. This is a, a potentially like album of the year, like level, level stuff. So we'll see. All right. We also have a yet another cover from the boys. We've got Bill Callahan. We've got Bonnie Prince Billy doing a, a, a cover of what looks like a, a John Prine song. She is my everything with Sir Richard Bishop. It's a beautiful moving and uh, just liking these covers. Just still dishing out some good covers. We've got uh, AJ Tracy over here dropping his uh, first solo single in a long time. It's a very low key hip hop banger that's smooth, nocturnal, uh, almost like an old school ASAP Rocky, uh, excuse me, old school ASAP Rocky vibe to it a little bit, I would say. Um, liking that about it. And uh, shout out to AJ Tracy. Just a good single all around. And uh, that has been it for the weekly track roundup, everyone. Hopefully you got some good recommendations out of this one. You guys are the best. I'll see you in the next one. Anthony Fantano, forever. <laughs>